Hello, my name is Bethany O'Rear and I'm a Regional Extension Agent for Alabama Extension. Thank you for joining me today to learn more about Container Gardens, a part of our series for home vegetable gardens called Grow More, Give More. At the end of this presentation, you'll see a list of some publications that you might find useful at our website, aces.edu. There are so many great reasons to get involved in container gardening. Sure, limited space might be the reason you first start with containers, but there are also gardeners who have always had lawns and trees and want to try vegetable or herb gardening without a big commitment. Still others find that containers are just the right size to accommodate access issues. Whatever the reason, if you choose the right containers for you and the plants you want to grow, I think you'll be pleased at how much success you'll have. Having said that, containers are also great for controlling invasive plants. So if you want to grow mint for tea, only grow it in a container, never in your garden. Trust me on that. Vegetables need sun, water, and food. A good container will drain well and can be placed where the plant will get enough sunlight to thrive. Beyond that, it's up to you. Formal clay pot, recycled bucket, or prefab vegetable box. There are choices for every budget and taste. If you're new to container gardening, you might want to try a few different types. Pots and containers can also be mixed in with other gardening projects with kids like painting and personalizing or with more grown-up garden design. Here are some container selection tips. No matter which container you choose, it must have at least one drainage hole, otherwise you will create a small pond. Another point to consider is the size. Make sure your pot is large enough to support the mature size of the plant or plants that you plan to add to that pot. Weight of the container should also be a factor. You want to have the freedom to move your plants around should the mood strike you. Heavy containers prevent this flexibility. Location also plays a role in the containers that you choose. If your pots are located in high traffic areas, you may want to choose ones that are more decorative. However, if your container is located in a less visible area, functionality, not aesthetics, can be your primary consideration. A good potting mixture is the key to healthy container vegetables and herbs. The soilless mix needs to drain well, but still hold enough moisture so that watering isn't a three time a day chore. You can find bag mixes at your local garden center or you can choose to mix your own. The internet has made choosing plants so easy, but I still prefer advice from a local garden center or nursery. When choosing vegetable varieties, look for those which include patio or container in the name. Also, an All-American selection winner is a gold standard because they've been tested in gardens across the country. When you're ready to choose your plants, know your containers first. Tomatoes need at least five gallon containers and six hours of sunlight. On the other hand, many herbs can be grown in a flower pot. Figure out what you can accommodate before you choose plants. Be sure to water adequately and consistently. The needed amount will vary as the plants grow and seasons change. Plants need food, but they don't need too much. Sound familiar? A lot of potting mixes already have fertilizers built in for three to six months. If you're not sure, look on the label for three numbers like 14, 14, 14. Those are the shorthand for the fact that nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium have been added to your soil. If you start fertilizing right away or too much, you might overfeed your plants. If you're not using an enhanced potting soil, there are lots of choices to help your plants grow. Slow release, dry, or liquid fertilizers. The most important thing Thing is to read the label. So now that you have a vision of the container garden you'd like to plant, I'd like to share a few last words for the wise. Clay pots are beautiful but porous. They need extra watering and can't be stored outside in winter unless protected from frost. Black plastic pots will feel just like your car's steering wheel on a hot summer day, so imagine how the roots will feel. Drip irrigation is easy to install and really helps on those hot summer days. Secure your pots with vining plants sooner to save a lot of headache later. No matter what you choose, be sure to check your garden daily. You'll see what needs extra water, what needs to be picked, and what is attracting butterflies or pollinating bees. Lastly, take photos for your own pleasure and make notes to help you plan next year's garden. For more information, check out our resources at aces.edu. 
If you have gardening questions, we have answers. Call the Master Gardener Helpline at 877-252-4769. Thanks for watching this presentation. Until next time, happy gardening.